is, as the name suggests, a member of the House of Lords, but she was in the Commons Gallery for question time today. So, Jacqueline, you, you were a Liz Trust supporter. What the hell has happened this last week? Well, um, first of all, you touched on one of the key issues, which is Brexit. As you've said, we've looked mm. at a couple of different people have come in. If we put Quasi at one side, and obviously Suella, there, mm. was, there was no alternative. Suella Braverman had to, had to resign. She breached the ministerial code, so she wasn't sacked. She had to resign. There is no alternative there. Mm. And um, I was in Brussels for 15 years, well, 20 years, because I also work for industry, and I supported Brexit. And our Secretary of State for Northern Ireland and the Minister Steve Baker and Chris Heaton-Harris are also strong Brexiteers, along with James Cleverley, who is the Foreign Secretary and is also involved, obviously, in the Northern Ireland Protocol and taking this forward. Um, so I don't have an issue, particularly, um, with the replacements, because the majority, actually, of the Cabinet and the majority of the Ministers would have been actually supporters of Brexit. But obviously, there are a number of people, like the Prime Minister herself, at that time, she thought Remain was the best thing to do, and she accepted democratically uh, the result of the referendum, much more, I may say, than the Labour Party and any of the opposition, and uh, moved on from there. So there is no going back on Brexit. We know that the Northern Ireland Protocol is extremely difficult, and we know there's pushback, certainly, from the European Union. It's still going on. Um, but we're determined, as best we can, actually to get this Northern Ireland bill through. And we know the Labour Party want to try and postpone it for six months and get it cracking. Let me just press you on that, though, because the replacement... I, I, let's take it as read that you're correct and that uh, the Home Secretary had no choice but to exit the stage. Grant Shapps was... Uh, organizing with these spreadsheets of his uh, that he likes to do every weekend uh, against uh, Liz Truss as, as recently as three days ago. Why is he the replacement? And just to be clear on this, just from a boringly constitutionally pedantic point of view on this, uh, the king's first minister is supposed to be the one who gets to appoint the cabinet. Are you fully confident that Liz Truss actually chose her current chancellor and her current home secretary? Yes. Um, there have been many more than Grant Shapps who have probably not been very pleased with the result of the election mm. for the leadership. I personally have got very little time for people who are sore losers. There was a, an election. It went to the membership. That's a process in our party. You know, if people want to change it in the future, then that's entirely up to them. And the majority voted for Liz Truss. And I liked her. I, I mean, I, I like the policies that she's putting forward. And uh, that's the end of that, as far as I'm concerned. So people can keep plotting. They can keep doing what they like. Um, but they're living in, you know, they're living in a parallel universe. Because at the end of the day, I think where we also have problems is... We have had some people, some politicians, who perhaps wanted to be leader of the party, they wanted to be prime minister, mm. they want to be a secretary of state, and they just do not realise how tough this is. I mean, we have got people in very high positions who are very ambitious, and there's nothing wrong with that. The politics, people like me go back to Maastricht. We go back to the ERM day mm. battle. We go back to being wiped out in 97. I go back to fighting seats in the East End of London and Peter and the whole nine yards. And the, 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 you know, the thing is in this business, if you are not resilient, if you're not prepared to take the tough times with the good times, they're not always good, but better, then it's the wrong job for you to be in. And as I said, uh, the trouble is you've got ambition and it's overriding everything else. And you have to, you, you shouldn't be making a rookie mistake that was made by the former Home Secretary now. I mean, they know the protocols. Yeah. People in these positions know the protocols. Um, so, OK, she resigned, and there was no alternative 
but for the Prime Minister to accept that resignation. A few further comments down the letter, I couldn't quite get those, uh, where she wasn't quite sure which direction it was going, because, you know, if she hadn't had to resign over this, would she still be Home Secretary this evening? So I couldn't quite square the circle with that. As for Grant, I mean, Grant, was a, he's, he's been around for a long time, as we know. Um, Prime Minister's decided to put him in uh, the Home Office, and he's got a job on his hands. So I, for one, will be expecting these people to deliver it. Well, what is it exactly? Uh, because you said you just a couple of minutes ago that you were a supporter of Liz Truss's policies. Yeah. Uh, Sir Keir Starmer had a, a nice little bit of Westminster Theatre today when he was doing his gone, gone, gone routine, listing yeah. a whole big bunch of Liz Truss policies that have been tossed out the window. Um, and so speaking of parallel universes, Jacqueline, which, which set of Liz Truss policies are you on board with? The ones she campaigned on and the ones quasi, quasi Quarting was hot for or these, this new subtle, not so subtle modification of those policies? Uh, well, let's just have a look when the mini budget was proposed. The only thing mm. that the opposition, including the Labour leader and the Labour Party, were opposed to was the decrease in the top rate of income tax. All of the rest of that content, they didn't object to at all. And it wasn't until, obviously, the market started to fire up uh, post the mm. rapid interest rates with the Fed. And that was obviously triggered by the energy price cap. Notwithstanding, that set the hair running um, because the markets didn't know just exactly what it was going to cost. Was it going to cost 200 billion more, less, whatever? So that was, I think, one of the main triggers that set the markets running at the time. So, uh, well, we're going to talk you know, a bit more. Yeah. You know, as, as, as far as I'm concerned, well, we'll, we'll... Um, I, I am a, a low tax, a low tax uh, no. free marketeer Tory. And that's what I am. People no. on middle incomes in this country paying top rate 40 percent tax on middle incomes, with the national insurance, et cetera, they're paying 50, more than 50% of their salaries and their wages yeah. in tax to the government. Now, this is the highest it's been for decades. We have got to look at it's how we deal with tax. OK, maybe the timing wasn't right for the mini, but I accept timing is everything. Uh -huh. But in terms of the principles and what we wanted to do with that mini budget, which the opposition, as I said, did not oppose at that time, we need to at least list trust. That's the philosophical argument and way forward for Liz Truss, because we, if we don't grow this economy, if we don't grow this economy, we can't generate that wealth. But obviously, we're saddled with a lot of debt that has gone back a long time and then been exacerbated by COVID, which costs several, several hundred billion quid. And that's without oh, yeah, obviously yeah. Putin, in, Putin in Western Europe and obviously the, the, the price of fuel uh, and energy. So no, you well, know, we, there's, we, a, there's a lot to deal with, got... and I accept your points. No, we've got we've got the highest tax burden in three quarters of a century, and that is doing immense damage. If you set aside the cultural and social issues, the migrants and all that kind of stuff, and say, so, oh, we'd like we don't want to talk about that. We just want to be fiscal conservatives for a bit. But yeah. fiscally, when you've got the highest tax burden for three quarters of a century since Clement Attlee, who Paul Fellow is passing beyond living memory for most Britons, that's a serious issue for the Tory reputation on fiscal soundness, isn't it? Absolutely. I mean, I absolutely agree with you. And uh, we can't sustain this in the long term. I mean, I, I am critical of the Bank of England. It kept uh, interest mm. rates at 0.25, 0.5 for the last few years. And it sort of was everybody mm. was lulled into this false sense of security. When I had a mortgage years ago, I paid about 8%. Yeah. I think people were actually quite cautious about taking it. And the banks were too. And the building mm. societies. But, you know, we bailed out the banks not that many years ago. Yeah. And so I expect the banks now and the building societies in tough times to get their act together and try and make sure that they can actually help their customers through this difficult period.